The Chameleon Killer, Terry Rasmussen. A series of murders took place with the same style, but they were all linked to a man with different names. This made the police confused and in disarray. What could they have missed? Did they miss out on the real killer? Is he the same person? This is a cold case story about the chameleon killer and his victims. Before we start, I would like you to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. In Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire on November 10th, 1985, two brothers were out on a hunting trip. One of the brothers spotted an oil barrel lying on its side, away from the trail. The foot bones were protruding from it. The brothers called the police who arrived to find the bones of a woman aged 23 to 33 and a girl roughly 11 years old. The remains of two more young children were discovered in a second barrel around 15 years later. Authorities spent decades trying to track them down until they finally, ca until they finally caught up with Terry Rasmussen, a serial murderer so brutal and clever that he used so many aliases that he became known across the country as the Chameleon Killer. How this crazy journey started. Ted Peter Rasmussen was born in Denver, Colorado on December 23, 1943. He went to Phoenix, Arizona's North High School until his sophomore year when he decided to transfer to another school. He joined the Navy in 1961 and served until 1967 before getting out. Rasmussen settled down in 1969, tied the knot, and raised four kids between Phoenix and Redwood City, California. It was 1970 when Rasmussen completed the necessary training to become an electrician. The Rasmussens had another kid in 1970 and then another in 1972 after relocating to Redwood, California. The family returned to Phoenix after a brief sojourn elsewhere. It was there that Terry Rasmussen, Rasmussen first started his web of lies and murder. Rasmussen was arrested in Arizona twice in the 1970s. The second time was in June 1975 for serious assault. His wife had finally had it and left him with the kids shortly after his incarceration. By the late 1970s, Rasmussen had adopted the alias Bob Evans and was making his way toward New Hampshire, where he would likely begin his murderous rampage. Rasmussen's son was burned with cigarette butts, and the family later reported that he was physically aggressive. In 1975, when he was arrested for serious assault, his wife and kids left him. Rasmussen's last known contact with his family was in either December 1975 or 1976, when he visited with a mystery woman. In 1978, they finally parted ways legally. Rasmussen moved from Arizona to Colorado to Virginia to Texas to Ohio to Oregon to Hawaii before settling down in New Hampshire in the late 1970s. He apparently liked to take the ladies and the kids on his journeys. He frequently found employment in the oil and gas industry as an electrician. Rasmussen used the identity Bob Evans while he was based out of Manchester, New Hampshire, where he worked at the Wombeck Mill. In 1980, he was apprehended three times for offenses, including check fraud, theft, and electrical current diversion. During his time in New Hampshire, a woman named Elizabeth Evans was recorded as his wife, but she has remained a mystery until this day. At least six murders committed in the continental United States between 1978 and 2002 can be attributed to Terry Peter Rasmussen, a.k.a. Bob Evans, Gordon Jensen, Curtis Mayo Kimball, Larry Vanner, and Jerry Mockerman. Rasmussen is known as the Chameleon Killian Killer due to his knack for using numerous identities. In the 1978 Bear Brook killings that took place in New Hampshire, Rasmussen was the main suspect. Between 1985 and 2000, the bodies of his daughter, his girlfriend's two daughters, and his ex-girlfriend's daughter were found in two barrels in the Allenstown region. Rasmussen took the daughter of his victim girlfriend, who vanished in 1981, and ran away to California with her. In 1986, he abandoned the child and was subsequently convicted of child abandonment and sent to prison. In 2001, after his release, he moved in with Yunsun Jun, a chemist. After being found guilty of murdering June in 2002, he passed away behind bars in 2010. DNA fingerprinting in 2017 ultimately led to Rasmussen's identification as the perpetrator, despite the fact that the Allenstown barrels were discovered during his lifetime. 
Three of the Bearbrook victims died as a result of the investigations that followed. The fourth victim, Rasmussen's daughter, has yet to be identified. Several further crimes have been linked to him since 2017. One of his first set of victims was a woman called Marlise Elizabeth. When 1978 rolled around, Rasmussen began courting Marlise Elizabeth Honeychurch. Honeychurch was last spotted on Thanksgiving in La Puente, California. After an altercation with her parents, she took her two daughters, Marie Elizabeth Vaughn, six, and Sarah Lynn McWaters, one, and left with Rasmussen. Honeychurch and Vaughn's bodies were discovered in a barrel in Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire, in the month of November 1985. Blunt head trauma was the cause of death for both of them. In 2000, a second barrel containing the remains of McWaters and a young kid, estimated to be between two and four years old, was discovered roughly 100 yards from the first. In 2019, DNA testing established the identity of Honeychurch and her two children. Authorities have confirmed that Rasmussen is the biological father of the third child, who remains unnamed as of June 2019. One of the victims of his crimes is Denise Bowden, she was from Goffstown, New Hampshire, and was having financial difficulties. Thanksgiving 1981 found her bringing her six-month-old daughter to her mother's house. Her so-called Bob Evans boyfriend accompanied her. They disappeared soon after Thanksgiving. Because she never heard from her again, Baudin's mother suspected that she and her daughter had run away to escape paying their obligations. Rasmussen is suspected by authorities of bringing Baudin to California and killing her there. Baudin's body was never found. Then in the first month of 1986, Gordon Jensen began working as the park's handyman at Holiday Host RV Park in Scotts Valley, California. He was accompanied by his daughter of five years, who went by the name Lisa. Unbeknownst to anyone, Jensen was actually Terry Rasmussen, posing under a new name. In June, he proposed to a middle-aged couple he'd just met that they adopt his kid, who he called Lisa. One day Rasmussen slash Jensen got in his car and drove off, leaving the girl with the couple for what he said would be a test run. When he failed to come back, however, Lisa was takes taken into protective care. Rasmussen Jensen had a DUI arrest on their record from the previous year in the Golden State. Curtis Mayo Kimball was his name at the time. Gordon Jensen was actually Curtis Mayo Kimball, a.k.a. Terry Rasmussen, according to a fingerprint the police took from the RV park, which led to allegations of child abandonment. Time elapsed for nearly three years. Rasmussen's arrest on a warrant for child abandonment occurred in March of 1989. He was given a three-year sentence, but only served one before being granted parole. Rasmussen had a parole violation the next day, and then he disappeared for over eight years. He told her that his daughter, Lisa, was adopted. In 1998, he was pulled over in California for driving without insurance or a license. The parole breach of the chameleon killer was not discovered. Also, Rasmussen had changed his name to Larry Vanner. In December 1999, chemist Yunsoon Jun of California reintroduced Rasmussen to her family as Larry Vanner. The couple secretly tied the knot in 2001. Her body, having suffered blunt force injuries to the head, was discovered buried in cat litter in their home, where June had vanished in June of 2002. In 2003, he pleaded no contest to charges related to her murder and dismemberment after being apprehended the previous November. He received a sentence of 15 years to life in prison. The court was caught off guard by the guilty plea. Homicide detective Roxanne Grunheide from Contra Costa County has said she believes he pleaded guilty after overhearing her mention she planned to have Lisa's paternity test. Fingerprint evidence connected him to the child abandonment case under the aliases Vanner, Jensen, and Kimball. The search for Lisa's biological family began in 2003 when a case was opened by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office. office. The case dragged on for years before DNA evidence proved he wasn't Lisa's biological father. Rasmussen, 67 at the time of his death on December 28, 2010, passed away behind bars at High Desert State Prison. His death was a result of complications from lung cancer, COPD, and pneumonia. It is very sad that he didn't face the totality of justice before he died, but it is enough that he died in severe pain. 
For more intriguing, suspenseful, and exhilarating cold cases, smash that subscribe button. Also, give this video a like.